Good morning, good morning. It's Wednesday Wisdom with Elizabeth Eleanor and we've got the beautiful Casey Lightbody here. I love these deep dives that um, that I've decided Wednesday Wisdom is all about instead of just the one session with people. I love having that, that extended um, conversation because we can go a little bit deeper in what you do and, and how you know we can serve the community. So welcome, Casey. Thank you so much for having me again. I'm so excited to be here. It's so nice, isn't it? And so we're going to be doing um, the three Ds and how 10x your business in a month. Mm. Like, I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I will say, Liz, it's been an evolution, right? So it's an, it's an evolution. And I think it's really important. I talk, talk about being a 15-year overnight mm. success, right? And um, it doesn't happen overnight. For some people, it's very lucky. Yes, it does happen overnight. But I really have learnt that being in business is a marathon and not a sprint. And it's about how can you continue to fall in love with the journey over and over and over again. And, you know, there's been so many learnings that I've had along the way. I am a manifesting generator. I'm a three five, um, if anyone knows human design. And one of the recent realizations that I've had is that I love to experiment and try things. And I know we're going to be talking about that next week, and I'm excited to talk about that conversation. But in my journey of experimenting, where so often I felt I made myself wrong for actually experimenting, it's been amazing lessons learned. And when I reflect back on my journey, it, there was there was always, it felt like there was always something off, right? Like I was very in my masculine like i am ambitious i'm driven i'm type a and in the past i absolutely loved to goal set right i went and i followed all the rules around smart goal setting so what is it specific measurable all the all the things right and i'd have my list and i'd like okay this is my goal and then the end of the year would come and i'd get so disappointed because I wouldn't hit my goal, right? And I was like, but I've do, been doing all the things. I've been doing all the things. Why aren't I hitting my goal? And so I beat myself up. And it was this um, it was this constant uh, up and down of, okay, I'm getting all excited because I've set my goals. I'm going to take all this massive action around my goals. And then I'll get to the end of the year. I get disappointed. And then we'd start again the next year, right? And something really shifted in me a couple of years ago where... I had a health scare. And I'm not sure if I've mentioned it on one of the previous interviews, but I had a health scare and I had to, um, I, had to I was facing surgery, right? And I had this, I had to make this decision. Okay, am I going to go for the surgery or am I going to try and heal this naturally? And so I did not want to have the surgery. And so I was like, no, I'm going to heal this naturally. And so I went to the naturopath and I got all the things and um, I started to do a bit of the work. But nothing was really shifting for me, right? I was like, oh, yes, I kind of have taken action, but I haven't really taken action. And it was this moment in time that I realized that I was only half committed, that I was actually only half in, that I wasn't fully committed to my health and wellness. And so as I started to think about that, I was like, oh, here's the thing. I had a goal and I wanted to achieve it. But the reason that I'm not achieving it is because there's no commitment that sits under the goal that is actually providing you with the safety and the support that's actually going to help you reach the goal. So a goal can sit there, but there's going to be a whole lot of friction with that goal if you don't actually have something underneath it to support it, right? And so I really went on that journey. It was actually the health and wellness journey that I went on that I learned this lesson around, okay, I'm going to, so it's the three Ds, right? And I said, I'm going to actually make a decision around this. With, and I'll, go, I'll come back to how that relates to the business in a second, but it started with the health and wellness journey. And I said, okay, I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to fully commit to my health and well-being, and I want to lose release. I'm going to release over 20, I want to release 20 kilos so that I can actually get ready because in all honesty, I'm facing surgery. I'm not going to avoid surgery. So I want to actually be ready. I want to be well and healthy for my surgery. And I gave myself 12 months. 
to actually release that weight. And so I started all the things that you told, like you logically and cognitively know these things, right? But it's the commitment yeah, piece, yeah. right? It's the, it's the commitment piece. So this is the second D, right? So I made the decision. That's what I'm going to do. And then I got dedicated to it, right? So I looked at all the things that I wanted to change around my behavior to actually stay dedicated to that decision. So that meant looking at what I was eating and really making my nutrition a priority. It look, meant looking at my physical health and what did I need to do to actually make that a priority. And then in terms of my mental health, what did I need to take into consideration to make that a priority? And then lastly, my spiritual um, and emotional, uh, my, my emotional and then my mental and spiritual health. And what did that look like to be healthy? And then the third D was the daily devotion to that. Right? Mm, mm. And so then it was this thing of, okay, I'm going to show up and I'm going to show up because I'm dedicated to the decision that I made around the goal that I wanted to achieve and that commitment that I've made to myself. And so what that looked like was I would, I would take the time to actually meal prep on a Sunday night, right? Or Sunday afternoon, I would actually plan out my meals for the week ahead and go shopping specifically for that food. Yes, so, yes. so I had them in the fridge that so was easy to meal prep. So I, again, so often I would just literally be tied at my desk and I, would, you know, I wouldn't even take time for lunch. I literally throw together, I love cheese, I love cheese. So I'd have cheese and whatever it is, right? And I just scoff that down in five minutes at my desk. But I actually made space in my calendar, right? So I actually took the time to actually have a lunch break. And that lunch break was me taking myself away from the computer and really connecting to myself, enjoying the food and the nourishment that I was putting into my body, right? So that was the first, that was around the nutrition. The second thing was about my, my exercise and I committed to walking. And so I started walking and I've set this goal for myself to walk 2023 kilometers in 2023. And it's been such a beautiful journey. You know, I've been committed since the 1st of January and it's been amazing to really watch how I've shown up in all of this, dedicated to that decision, taking daily devotion to it. But daily devotion doesn't necessarily mean that I'm actually walking every day. Some, yeah. day, some days it actually means choosing that I'm not going to walk today because my body doesn't want, and my body's saying that I don't want to walk today. Yeah, absolutely. So and listening. Yeah. Yes. And so it's actually having that commitment. Like it's the, it's the daily devotion to really listening to yourself with compassion, with grace, with kindness, and not being like forcing yourself to do it. That where that's where the masculine, like, okay, I'm going to have, I'm going to hustle. I'm going to do this thing. Right. The and whip. So, whip. It's the whip, right? Yeah. Exactly. So those were the three Ds. And so when I realized that in my health and wellness, I was like, oh, wow, I can take this. Now that I've embodied this in one area of my life, I can actually take this and I can actually adopt it inside my business too. And so that's what that looked like is I really looked at, okay, what's my decision? My decision is I want to make X amount of money in my business in the next quarter. So it was a decision in that moment of what that looked like. And then I brought in the dedication, right? So what is what is the dedication to this? Now, at the end of the day, as I've mentioned in the past, it's all about how can you get visible? So how can you get eyeballs on your business so that people know that you exist? How can you build that relationship with people so they get to like you so much that they're at the point where they're ready to buy from you, right? And so that dedication involved looking at the tactics that I really wanted to adopt that felt good for me too, right? So again, this all comes yeah. back to the feeling of it. And one of the things that I really realized was I do love to speak. I love to get in front of people to actually share my gifts. And I show up like just, you know, not polished. I mean, this, you know, I can, I stutter, I have got multiple tabs in my brain. And as I'm talking, I've got another idea and then I flip to another idea and it's not perfect at all. But I love to actually just speak about what I'm doing, right? And so I knew that that was a tactic that I wanted, wanted to adopt. And so the specific time frame that I'm talking about, where we literally 10x the business 
in the in the space of a month is I was fortunate enough to get on to a real life stage, which was amazing. And so I'd taken the actions to get into to, to make this happen, right? So that was the dedication and the da daily devotion to that was actually show like actually showing up to make these opportunities happen, right? But then what happened, which was really interesting, was I then leant back, right? So it's the daily devotion, but it's not the attachment to the thing that you're actually trying to make happen. Because, so because well, process, yeah, because yeah, daily devotion can, the daily devotion in our masculine orientated, and I'm not talking men, I'm talking the, the action of masculine, in our masculine orientated world, Daily devotion can be still um, interpreted as the whip. Right? <laughs> like, exactly. It, exactly. It can be still, you know, like push, push, push to get what you need done. And, and instead of, as you were saying, leaning back, you know, making the decision, being dedicated to the decision, and then doing that on a daily basis. And how does that look? Like you were saying, in, you know, when you're walking, sometimes that meant. Having, having that pause and rest in the body. And so, you know, like having having the daily devotion in your work, can I just ask you what that looked like? Yes, 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 absolutely. So part of it is just literally showing up as yourself, right? So again, really looking at, I would be doing a real audit across all of your marketing, for example, and saying, where am I showing up because I feel like I should be showing up? Mm. Or where am I showing up because I'm dedicated to that because it feels good for me and I'm just going to show up as me, right? So when I think of that moment on the stage, I literally showed up as me. There was no, and there was actually no attachment to a specific outcome. So I showed up on that stage, not because I was like, oh, wow, well, I'm going to get X number of sales at the end of this. Like I just showed up because I wanted to show up. Like that felt really good for me, right? Mm -hmm. And then the daily devotion to that was, I continue that the connections that I made post the event, if I felt called to reach out to that person to actually share something with them, I would. If it meant that it was, well, here's an example, right? I actually ended up getting COVID after that event. And I remember- I know the event because right. I got COVID too. <laughs> I actually, uh, yeah, it was the first time I'd ever had it. So. Right. And, so, and so part of that, so what happened was that, so the daily devotion to that was actually what it meant was I, in the past, I would have been totally stressed because, okay, yes, I'd been at the, this event, there were so many opportunities, I'd made so many connections, and I would have forced myself to actually, like, actually commit to however many, like, following up with all the contacts and the contents, the contacts in the space of a few days or whatever. But what happened was I was actually forced to go and lie in bed and actually recover. And so that re that daily devotion to myself in terms of rest was a massive catalyst because what happened was it literally opened the floodgate so that I literally, I had three, I actually had three sales calls while I was actually sick in bed. While you were sick, I while remember, I, was, I remember I seeing the post. Yes, while I was yeah. in bed. And like we closed, we closed so much business off the back of that, right? We And it's, it's been incredible. But it was the daily devotion to my health first and then feeling into whether I wanted to have the sales conversation. So I could like, it, there was no attachment to us. Like I have to have the sales conversation. It's like, do I want to have the sales conversation? So again, it was a very different mindset that I went into where I, it wasn't forced, it wasn't hustle, it wasn't, um, shooting on myself, it was like, do, does this feel good to me in the moment, right? And so that's the distinction, Liz, that I think is really important, just always coming back to asking yourself, are you doing this because you've been told that you should be, do it, should be doing it, or is it because you actually really want to do it? And so, so that's the piece, mm. that's, the re that's a really important piece. And I think one of the other things that I want to talk about is words dedication and discipline because I, I started off by saying yeah. oh I have to have discipline but the discipline made it feel hard it made it feel heavy it made it feel like I've actually got to have this it's like 
this whip, like you said, again, but the dedication comes from a deep, mm. inner, it comes from that deep inner place, right? Like what, like why, it does, why, yeah. like why do you want to do that? Right. And it comes from a place of like, like connecting to the why, which is all the work that you do, right? Is that it's, it's that deep connection mm -hmm. to, the to the purpose piece. So when I stood on stage, I believe that my message that women are going to heal and lead the world, especially quiet ones, I need like I as hard as it is and so much of the work that I've been doing is the inner work for myself to be actually be able to share my voice with the world because this work's so important. When I get on stages and share this, I know that this is the important work. So that's the dedication piece, right? As scary as it is, and I can talk about my fear of public speaking and all the things, right? But it's actually the dedication to that that allowed me to get on the stage in the first place. And then it's the daily devotion to in all honesty to the mission that I'm that I'm wanting to to create to the, that my mission is the movement that I'm wanting to create that's allowing me to have the daily devotion to showing up every day in all honesty that's the, that it comes back at, at the core of it that's what it comes back to right mm -hmm. and and can I just let's just go back to the decision too because mm. one of the things that I find in you know with working with women myself is we think we're making a decision but we're making it half assed right we're 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 making a decision now and then it gets changed somewhere along the line so so that you know the the decision that you were talking about and then the dedication to that decision you know how much that comes in you know hand in hand because you know, I was just listening to you talking about how I was, you know, a health scare that sort of catapulted you into these into this process, and so aligned with my one, right? So, so I had the same experience. You know, ended up with a had a brain tumor, and I had to make that decision: am I doing it their way or am I doing it my way? And once I made that decision, like I. And, and it was an intuitive thing. I, I went home, I processed, I really tuned into my higher self, my super conscious, where am I sitting with this? Got the download of what to do this, and it was, you know, go and get it out. Mm -hmm. um, in that process, once I made that decision, I went full, full in. Right. You know, right. like there, there was one time that they gave me like some sort of injection at the end, like after the operation, um, they'd come in and they were giving me something in my belly and I said, you know, what's this? And they said, it's it's like a blood thinner, blah, blah, blah. And I went, do I want a blood thinner in my body? And I went, okay, wait a minute. I'm, I've made the decision to to um, be dedicated to this. You know, I'm going the whole way, right? Yes. Mind you, I did it in my space and I yes. stopped them from giving me, you know, like they were trying to get me to have painkillers and blah, 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 but I I did it within my boundary circle. Yes. But I went, this is what I'm doing. And so bringing that back into business, you know, when when you make a decision about where you're heading with business is is that dedication to that decision and and the daily devotion that extends that decision and stops the unconscious from coming up with the whys that pivot you back into the distractions, back into the, you know, working too hard, missing lunches, all of those things that you think you've got to do and, and you know, just being really aligned with that decision. Yeah, so absolutely, absolutely, Liz. So again, and I want to talk about decisions because I think it's so, as business owners, we're making decisions on a daily, hourly, literally minute, minute by minute basis, we're making decisions, right? And so I want to come back to decisions, but you so rightly, you so rightly pointed out that it's so easy to lose track of the decision if we don't have the dedication, daily dev devotion that supports us in committing to that decision, right? So that's why we need all three of those things in conjunction to make sure that we stay in our lane, that mm. we don't get sidetracked or, uh, you know, distracted or whatever it is. It actually helps us 
that lane and um and supports us because like you said once you made that decision again it, it it's almost like it gives you freedom to be in that flow again because you're like oh now i know where i'm headed so now i can actually play in that space it's just yes like, I, I can find my way and this is where i talk about walking it's my pathway to seven and eight figures because it's been such a journey of self-discovery, my walking, um, and the, and I get to play on my walk. I play in my mind. I play with nature. I play with my environment. I play with music. I play like I have so much fun, and that's where so many of my downloads come from because I'm actually committed to that daily devotion, right? And so that's really important. But specifically around decisions, I think there's a it's really important to actually look at how you're making your decisions because it's really important to make a decision from that place of intuition like you said it's about actually creating that space to say okay what is my like what's my gut what's my heart what's my instinct what's my high power actually telling me about this and really leaning into that before you actually let fear take over okay mm -hmm. so when you're actually making this decision really have discernment around whether this decision is being made out of your intuition or whether it's being made out of fear because it's really easy to fall into making decisions and you're like oh this is the right decision i'm going to go with this decision but it's actually not the aligned decision the aligned decision is actually probably something that's probably even bigger but you're like oh gosh i'm a bit scary i don't know whether i should make that decision right it's got a little bit of the comfort zone you know stretching absolutely exactly exactly and so on that point you know and we've had this conversation about it it's like the decisions that we make in our business, I want you to think about where you at in your business and think about where you want to be. What is your desire? Like, is it to hit your cons like consistent 5k months? Is it to hit your first six figure year? Is it to hit, hit your seven figure year? And then ask yourself, is this a million dollar decision? And really like that is the, like that is the key, right? Mm -hmm. Is this a six figure decision? Because that, by making, like, right, really looking at those decisions, you're like, ah. Oh. I just lost you. Oh, can you hear me? You've frozen, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's, it's a little bit slow at the moment. I think it's my, my internet. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it is. I just got an unstable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All good. We're, we're very close to, um, it, it is, it's, it, if you can just repeat that last little bit. Yes, Liz. So I was thinking, wherever you are in your business, right, whether it's you're wanting to hit 5k months, whether you're wanting to hit those six figure months, whether you're wanting to hit those seven figure months, whatever it is, ask yourself, is this a million dollar decision? Is this a six figure decision? Asking yourself those questions is going to help you tune into where where you want to make the decisions from because you want to actually make the decisions from your future self who doesn't actually hold that current identity and so it's actually going to let you like it's going to stop you actually making decisions from fear because when you're working from that decision it's going to actually stretch you and help you move in the right direct, direct, direction of where you want to take your business as well mm, absolutely absolutely we did have a few people um on here it's funny how facebook um works you know like one one time it's like this and the next time it's like that so the the chat has gone but i did see um jody was on here and kate was on here um i don't know if they asked any questions because the the chat's gone now so <laughs> but we can go back in and um have a chat with them afterwards if they've got any um questions that they'd like to ask absolutely thank you so much casey for for another beautiful conversation um and so next week is our last week and it's going to be pre-recorded. So um, we're going to um, talk. Do you remember what our talk is? Yes, we're going to be talking all about experimenting in our business. That's right. So that's yes. going to be a fun conversation that I can't wait to share. Uh, yeah. Bring your, bring your private investigator hat on <laughs> yes. to that conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sounds good. So if anyone's got any questions, please feel free to put it in the chat. Hashtag replay if you're watching the replay. Um, thank you so much, Casey. It's been a pleasure talking to you again. You're so welcome. Thanks for having me. And um, we will catch everyone soon. Have a great week.